All right, so once again, retrograde motion is just an optical illusion if you use if you use the heliocentric model, right? If, if you know that's the sun is at the center of the solar system, then retrograde motion is just simply one planet overtaking another in its orbit. And and you know, you're using the the stars as background, and so the you know the the planet the the outer planet or well this works for the inner planets too um the, the the you know one planet will will seem to go backwards with respect to the stars and then forward again but that's it you know that's just the two planets going around the same circle the same center of the circle uh, and uh you, you know that's that, that that's all that's all this is that's all the retrograde motion is and you know yeah you know we say that now but it took a long time for humans to figure that out right because of aristotle was so incredibly influential um uh, but by the way um so so one of the first uh colleges in in the united states when the united states was formed even before it was formed um you know, when we were still a colony, uh, Harvard, um, which of course is still a very famous university, um, w was actually teaching the geocentric model to, to their students when they first opened, right? And, and uh, it, it was only later that they began to, to teach the, the uh, hey, you know, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of years back. Um, anyhow, uh, all right, so, so, so that's, uh, you know, that, that, that was, of course, um, uh, the, you know, what, what, uh, Copernicus had said, um, all right. So, so the, now, now the thing about this is, um, so, you know, you, you to think, okay, well, th that's nice. It's, it's nice that you can suddenly, you have a natural explanation for retrograde motion, um, you know, just which, which is just an optical, it's just an optical illusion. That's, that's, that's all that, that retrograde motion is. The planet never, never actually stops in its path and then begins to go backwards and then for, forwards again. Um, but, but, you know, Copernicus, uh, didn't, didn't explain everything. Um, one, one thing was, is that the fact that he used perfect circles. So, so the, what he said is that, whoops, let's go back. Um, is that the sun was the center, and he, he still adopted the idea that was sent down all the way from Pythagoras, right? So the, the time of Pythagoras, um, that that all everything in the in the heavens travels in perfect circles. Uh, so so you know Copernicus wasn't ready to to give that up, and and because of that he was not able to predict. Um, the accuracy of of where the planets were going to be. Remember, that's that's the goal, right? Is can you can you come up with a model that that accurately predicts where the planets are going to be? And and of course, remember Ptolemy had a pretty good model, and it worked with certainly within a human lifetime, and maybe a little bit more than that. Um, it only it only breaks down when you go into hundreds of years um, over time. Um, and, and, but the thing is, Copernicus didn't do any better because he used perfect circles and the, the planets don't travel in perfect circles as we're about to see. Um, all right. So, uh, the other thing of course, is he never, he couldn't, he couldn't explain, um, you know, Aristotle's absolutely correct reasoning that the, the that the stars should undergo parallax motion. If, when, when you look at a star six months apart, so you look at the star and then six months later, you look at the star again, you should see a parallax. Of course, during the, when, when Copernicus comes along, there aren't even telescopes yet. Not, not only are there not any, not any telescopes, the telescope needed another 200 years of technological innovation before you could actually observe parallax because it's such a tiny, it's just a tiny, tiny thing um, with, with even the nearest stars. All right. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. All right. So now we come to um, the story of Tycho Brahe, and, and then ultimately we're going to get to Kepler. 
Tycho Brahe is just is is a figure that um, that we encounter. Um, he, he was a contemporary of Johannes Kepler. Kepler's really the main person. Um, what what Tycho Brahe was was a um, uh, what was he Dutch or something like that? I, I forget exactly what where, where he was from, but. Um, what, what he did, what, what, which was really, really important, is he invented an instrument right before the telescope was invented. Okay, so, so he dies, and then after, after he dies, in fact, in the year 1609, um, is when Galileo turns his very primitive telescope that he built himself to the night sky. All right, that's a different story. We'll get to that shortly. But um, what, what, Tycho Brahe does as a hobby. This is just this guy's hobby. Is he 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 watches the stars, and, and he builds an instrument, and 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 measures the the positions of the stars and the planets, of course, um, with really um, amazing accuracy for again naked eye observations. You know, it gets much more accurate when. In 1609, and afterwards, of course, um, when uh, you, you're able to use um, telescopic observations. All right. So, but but this is right before the telescope, um, and so so Tycho Brahe is is observing the night sky and observing things. He, he actually saw a supernova occur, which is a which is a um, what well, we know now. He didn't know what it was back then. But it was when a star would suddenly explode and get very, very bright in the night sky. Or it might even be um, a star that you couldn't see in the night sky that just suddenly um, illuminated the night sky. Um, you, you, you might remember earlier in the chapter, I mentioned how uh, the Chinese observers or, or um, uh, Asian observers um, had record, I think think it was actually Chinese observers that that had had observed uh, a supernova in 1066. Um, so 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 the the, the, uh, the those so I'm just going back in time here. Um, the, those Chinese observers who observed a different supernova. Um, in fact, that the supernova that I'm thinking of that that occurred in 1066 was um, was. Uh, was observed, um, and and it was so bright that you could actually see it during the daytime, that, according to those those Chinese observers. Um, in fact, it was so bright that at night, when you could see it at nighttime, um, it, it would actually uh, you could actually read by it, like that. And so that 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 was a very very bright supernova. Um, so Tycho Brahe actually observed a supernova, and so. So did Kepler, the guy who is his contemporary, um, and and in fact Kepler ends up working for this guy for a short amount of time. Um, all right, so um, so 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 Tycho actually uh, comes up with his own little model of the solar system. Um, it was not um, nobody followed it. Uh, because, I mean, it's completely inaccurate, but um, it was kind of like a hybrid. Of of uh, the geocentric model, where um, yeah, it 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 doesn't even it doesn't really matter. The thing that matters about Tycho is that he brings Kepler along. Um, you know, so so Kepler is the so Kepler is really the the brains. Okay, so Tycho Brahe has has all sorts of money. He's actually of uh, of of minor nobility. Right, so I, you know, during the Middle Ages, what that means is he's got a lot of money, basically. So he's got a lot of money, and he's actually um, he's completely different than Kepler, right? He's he likes to have a good time. Um, so there's some crazy stories about this. He actually um, he's in a duel at one point in his life, and uh, somebody something so with with swords. Um, and somebody chops off his nose. And so, so like for the, for the rest of his life, he has a golden nose um, built, you know, made. 
and 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 uh, you know puts puts this golden nose on his face. So, I don't know. That's that was that was his that was his thing. Um, that was one of his things. Uh, but but you know he observed the night sky very very accurately and met, so he he was he was more of an experimental uh, person. You know he he would and, and uh, he would observe stuff and record it really very very accurately. All right, so Kepler is really the brains, right? Kepler is a is a mathematical genius by any stretch of the imagination. He's an absolute uh, mathematical genius. In fact, um, just to just to give you a, a sense of Kepler, um, over uh, the discussion with somebody, um, he, he you know he writes this stuff down. That's why we know about it over the discussion of the shape of a wine barrel, okay, he um, comes within a hair. He doesn't quite do it, but he comes within a hair or, or so of inventing calculus, you know, a full generation before Isaac Newton does it, right? So, so I mean, he, again, he comes really close, um, but he does do some things that are really important. Um, one thing is he goes and he 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 lives with Tycho, um, and and because Tycho knows that no matter what, um, his observations are are not going to you know all these all this detailed observations that he's making is is not really good to anybody, and his name will not really live on um, if unless somebody makes some discoveries with his what with his data. And so he brings Kepler along. Uh, Kepler goes to his castle, and the two of them hate each other. They just, just hate each other. Um, so, I, like I said, Tycho Brahe is a big party animal, <laughs> and Kepler is this very stoic uh, Lutheran German. <laughs> I mean, he was a Lutheran German. But he even gets in trouble with the Lutherans, as a matter of fact, and gets excommunicated uh, by by the Lutheran, the the, the relatively new Lutheran church um, excommunicates him. Um, he spends a lot of time um, trying to defend his mother, who was accused of the. I mean, this was a big deal back then. But he, his mother was accused of being a witch, and you know that that was a big deal. And he spends a lot of time and effort trying to get her freed. Um, he lives right around the time of what's called the Thirty Years War, and so he's also known as the trap of the as the wandering mathematician. All right, so um, so a couple of things. So, so first of all, um, Tycho Brahe. We'll go back to oops. We'll go back to him. Um, so Tycho Brahe is making these observations and in particular he observes mars for about 20 years okay so that, that's not insignificant that is incredibly significant and and he so he has these these he, he calls them um i guess some some richer guy um funded these things they were they were they, i think it was king rudolph or something i don't know he calls them the rudolphian tables and so the Rodolphian tables um, are, you know, his life's work. And um, Ke Kepler, who who comes along right right at the end of Tycho's um, life, uh, in in fact, is there when Tycho dies. Um, oh, let, let me. So, so Tycho's death. I, I should go into. Do I have enough time? Um, so Tycho is again. He's he's he, he enjoys he enjoys some some adult beverages. And, and, you know, he's having a party at, at his castle and um, he's drinking and drinking. And for some reason, I, I, there's some bizarre custom where he can't rise to relieve himself, like to go to the bathroom, before, you know, because there was somebody of higher nobility than him. And so he literally holds it in and he he, he literally holds in, you know, he has to, he has to um, go to the bathroom. And, and and his bladder bursts, and and he takes him about a week to die, um, and let's see, he dies in sixteen oh one. All right, so and Kepler was there when this 
you know, he, he was there. He didn't want to be at the 